In this video, we're going to start a conversation about tearing apart and learning from FileMaker's free Invoice Starter Solution that's part of FileMaker Pro 13. Now up front, I want to be very clear about this starter solution. This starter solution may say starter solution, but under the hood it's really advanced. And if you're a brand new FileMaker developer, you're going to be quickly in over your head as you begin to try to take this tool apart and learn from this tool. So if you're a new FileMaker user, you can watch this video, but if you want to learn on your own, I suggest you start with other star solutions that are more simple. And what do I mean by complex? Well, first off, this starter solution was not engineered in mind with brand new people who are new to the FileMaker platform. It was designed as a learning tool, and the learning that can go on inside of this is designed for anyone from an intermediate to an advanced FileMaker developer. So what are we going to do in this video? Well, this video is all about scripting. It's about scripting popovers. It's about scripting slide controls within popovers. It's about adding related records to your database. And we're also going to cover some information about script parameters and variables. We're also going to discuss using value lists to pass multiple field values into a single script parameter something that's not necessarily obvious to most beginning and intermediate FileMaker users. Now first off is a quick overview. I'm going to go to field definitions here and show you what we're dealing with. In this video we're only going to be focused on the invoices, invoice data, and products, tables, within the invoices starter solution. Now if you're familiar with other FileMaker solutions, sometimes you'll see invoice data referred to as invoice line items. So that's what this table is right here. It's the line items on your invoice. Of course, one record here in invoices equals an invoice, and one record here in products equals a product. So it's pretty straightforward. If I go to relationships, I want to show you what we're going to be focusing on. We're going to be focusing on this TO right here, these two TOs right here, and this one right here. These four are the only ones that we're really going to concern ourselves with just for this training. So let me open up an invoice right here and let's dive in. Let me show you this piece of functionality first and then we'll go through how it was built and odds are you're going to learn something along the way. So first off, this is a button right here. This button right here is actually a popover button and it pops up a popover window right here. Now by default, this popover window is going to show us all the products that are in our product table. I only have three sample records in there and these of course aren't very descriptive but each one would have a price and you can actually select this item and add it to your invoice. That's pretty cool. Now some customers start to get lots of products in their system. You can actually go in here and if you knew that you were looking for some sort of uh, hoagie HOG and press the return key, FileMaker is set up to filter this information right here and just give us the matching records where we can select once again the item that we're looking for. Of course, that's fairly straightforward. We can also look for services that are loaded within the product database. So it's not just products, but also services. Now this button at the top is pretty slick. This allows us to, on the fly, add a new product to this database. So I can say, magical widget. As you can see, we have a magical widget that turns water into gold coins. And at $45, that's a pretty good deal, but we definitely want to mark this up so we make a nice, healthy profit on it. We're also going to notate that it's taxable. Once we're done here, I can say done. It adds a magical widget to our invoice on our invoice line items here. It also adds it to our product database right here, as you can see. The magical widget has been added automatically, pretty slick. So how does all this work? So first off, this whole system that we've just showed you operates across these four scripts right here. That's it. Now unfortunately these scripts aren't commented, so that's why it's handy to have someone like me help you tear it apart. And the easiest way to learn how all this works is to use your copy of FileMaker Pro Advanced, turn on Script Debugger, and then activate the system and watch what happens. So if I press this button right here, this pops up Initially, no script was activated. When I select product, we start to get scripts that are activated here. I can step into and run the script. Pretty straightforward. And then I can, of course, add maybe another magical widget. 
and I can step through. Now, of course, at this point, a number of scripts all fire. I'm going to take the opportunity to show you what's going on here. First off, it's important to note that this button right here doesn't activate a script. It simply brings up this popover right here. This popover, if you double click it, actually has a script trigger attached to it. It actually calls this script called popover add product item. Now what's interesting about this is that when this starter solution was developed, it was decided by FileMaker to have three different situations actually all call the same script. Now some people like to do this when you're doing development. They prefer to call one script and have that script do logical determinations to determine what's going on. I, on the other hand, typically like to be somewhat more verbose and I would rather write three separate scripts for each scenario. You actually end up writing more scripts, but when reverse engineering or making corrections, it's sometimes a lot easier to have things separated and itemized. That being said, closing this window right here runs the popover add product item script. Selecting the item off the list will also run the same script as well. And lastly, in the third situation, pressing the Done button right here will actually activate that script as well. There's three separate scenarios. One scenario is where we've created a new product. One scenario is where we've selected an item off the portal to add. And the last scenario is where we've just clicked out of the area and dismissed the popover entirely. I'm going to bring up the script and take a look at what we have going on. It's somewhat better to comment all this stuff out, but just to give you an idea of what's going on and maybe get you started in looking at this. The search field is here at the top. When this script runs, it clears your previous search if you had one. The next thing it does is it forces a script refresh. Now the reason this is required is that frequently, when you set up a filter here in FileMaker, this does not always refresh itself automatically when the filter criteria change. Therefore, frequently it's important to force FileMaker to refresh the screen. It's just the way this function behaves. We talk about this in more length in my FileMaker Pro video training course. That being said, anytime you see a perform script trigger refresh, which are in here a couple times in different places, this is specifically designed to force that portal to refresh with the latest information. Now right here is where it gets interesting and we have our three possible scenarios. Remember we said we called this script from three different situations. Well if we call this script because we're actually dismissing this dialog, there won't be any script parameters at all passed when this script is activated. And therefore it will actually start the if statement here, ignore this else if statement here, and then we'll exit the script right here. Now what's also interesting is that there are two slide controls right here, slide control 1 and slide control 2. Each of these slide controls also have a title. Slide control 1 is called select product panel. The second slide control is new product panel. And so what we do right here is we actually determine if the new product panel is the front panel. That's a get layout object attribute function in FileMaker. Is front panel is a reserve string that will tell us either true or false whether this object is the front panel. If that's the case, then we go through this situation right here. If we're actually creating a new product, we'll execute this scenario right here. Now I want to point something out real quick. We have this variable called selected item. Now this variable is a local variable, which means that we define it during the course of this script. Once these scripts halt, this value will be dropped out of memory in FileMaker. It's a very temporary variable. We use it and then we chuck it out the window when we're done. And what we're interested in capturing is the product name and the ID of the product. We set those into a value list and we assign that to dollar selected underscore item. Now what do we mean by this? Well, this gets into passing script parameters. Once again, this is a little bit more advanced, but understand that one script can call another script. When one script calls another script, a single block of text can be passed from one script to the other script. That's called a script parameter. Now, if you have lots of different values that you want to pass, maybe four or five different fields or values, maybe you want to say someone's first name and their last name and their city, state, zip, address, 
Well, it's all going to go as one block of text, which can make for a mess. You'd like to be able to individually identify those items. Well, how do you do that? One of the coolest and easiest ways is using the list function. The list function allows you to actually build a value list. Now I know that we're going pretty fast here with this explanation. So if you've never heard of script parameters before or the list function before, we dive into this more deeply at somewhat a slower pace in our FileMaker Pro training series. I know I keep mentioning that, but it's important to understand that if you're confused, there are additional resources to help get you up to speed. In this situation, we press a button right here. We actually call this script, but we also pass a script parameter. We actually build the value list on the fly right here. We say, take the product name right here, and also grab the product ID number, which we need that. That's the key field inside the system. We put both of those in a value list that look like this. Because we have a value list, each line represents a different value for a different variable or a different field. Pretty slick. So that way we have one block of text, but we can actually load in multiple values. Of course, the flip side of this is we have to retrieve that information out of the system. And how do we do that? Right here. When we get to the point where we're actually going to create the new item, we're going to go to a field in the portal. That's an important tip. The next thing you're going to do is go to the last portal row. This causes FileMaker to create a new related record. Then you're going to extract those two items from that stashed value list. If that stashed value list came across in a script parameter, but then we took the script parameter and loaded it into the variable. So then what we do is we run this function called getValue. GetValue allows us to suck specific positions or specific values out of a value list and send them on their merry way. So in this case, we're going to grab from this variable position one, and we're going to load it here in this field, which is on the invoice line items, the product description, and then we're going to get position two from the variable, and we're going to load that in the product ID field. And next we leave the customer at the quantity field. So let's watch this activate. I'm going to run the script debugger real quick. I go back to browse mode over here. I'm going to say, let's create a new line. I'm going to select the Joe Hoagie item. I select it. Notice that we are calling our script and we have the script parameter right here. I can click there. And now we're running this script just like we talked about. We come down. Now it runs the trigger to refresh the portal to make sure we have a fresh update on the portal. Then we see that it's not empty. So then we set the script parameter that was passed from that button over here to the script parameter over here that we capture using get script parameter. We drop that into our variable. Continue forward. It's going to skip all that code, skip this scenario here, skip this scenario here. We talked about those. Now it's going to reset right here, this pop-up window, and reset the slide panel to the correct panel. Then it closes the popover. Now because it closed the popover, it's rerunning the script so the script actually called itself. But because the script called itself, when the window is dismissed, it's going to exit out this scenario right here. Remember, three different scenarios can call this script. So it skips that one, and then right here it exits. Now we're back to our original script, which was processing all this. Then we say, step into the field on the portal. It has to be a field in the portal. Next step, go to the last record, which is what we just did. Okay. Next, insert the product name. And lastly, insert the product ID, which you actually don't see there. It's hidden from screen, but it's there. And lastly, we drop the user into the quantity field. So this is a pretty slick setup, and I wanted to walk you through this. Hopefully this will give you a little bit of an idea of some cool functionality that's part of the FileMaker Star Solution. Maybe you learned a little bit here, and maybe along the way you'll learn how to take these scripts apart, use the script debugger in FileMaker Pro Advanced to step through these scripts to learn how they work. If you'd like to learn more about building your own FileMaker solutions, or becoming more of a power user with FileMaker, 
and learning how to make some customizations yourself, feel free to check out our FileMaker Pro video training course at learningfilemaker.com.